If you know my story about learning languages and teaching languages and learning how other people can learn languages, you probably know that I used to teach English um, as, a, as a teacher here in Slovakia. And then in 2015, I met polyglots. I, I discovered the world of other people like me, and I was really excited that there are other people excited about learning languages one after another. And that's when I started to realize there are certain differences about learning languages and especially about learning grammar. And that's what I would like to tell you briefly about in this video. The differences I noticed in the traditional way of learning languages, the one which I myself taught as a teacher in language schools and the university in, in schools, and the approach that polyglots have uh, to grammar and learning, learning languages using grammar. I noticed that um, at school or in the traditional way of, of learning languages, um, grammar is usually taught in little squares. If you imagine this piece of paper as all the grammar you need to learn in that language, then people usually start with, with, in a lesson, they start with a certain grammar point like the present continuous, I am doing, right? And then we learn all about it, all the exceptions, all the rules, and we try to practice it a lot. And we don't deal with anything else. It's as if the other grammar didn't even exist. We just focus on this one. And we maybe deal with it for a week or two, then we write a test, and then we move on to the next square. And that's, for example, the present simple. And, and this is how grammar is covered at schools, in actually in most uh, traditional settings, um, most learning environments. Uh, so people cover one after another and they go into a lot of detail and try to color it really precisely and only then do they move to another one. What happens after some time, unfortunately, is that, let's say in the picture on the right, you have been learning the language for two years, but there is so much white space on, on, on the paper, there is so much of grammar that you have no idea about, you have never seen it in practice, you have never heard about those rules, you don't know anything about it because you focus on those few things which are considered basic in, in the language and you may know a lot about them, you may know all the exceptions, but all the other area is just empty space for you, right? I believe that polyglots approach it differently and grammar is not done in little squares and, you know, discussed in, in a lot of detail or learned in a lot of, lot of detail, but rather uh, polyglots do a little bit of this and that and learn, you know, a, a few examples of the present simple and present continuous and uh, the past tenses and a few irregular verbs. And, and they just keep doing this uh, throughout the whole paper. So some of the things which they learn, even at the beginning, may be very advanced, but they don't go into the detail. They don't uh, look at the explanation of uh, models, for example, could have done, should have been. Uh, they just notice, oh, this exists here and this is what it means in this context, but I don't need to look at all the exceptions right now. Let me go through a few other instances of other grammar phenomena. And that's what they keep doing. And this is how they are coloring the paper blue. They are looking for more examples, more instances of this and that. And, and, and this is how they achieve uh, a blue paper at, uh, at, in, in a much shorter time, because as you can see, the white spaces are very nicely uh, put all over the paper, uh, but they are not concentrated in this one part. So we don't know a lot about a small part of grammar, as in, as in the school system, but we know a little bit of everything, even though there are still uh, white spots. And in, with this system, with this approach, it may mean that you have some white spots even in the beginning, uh, the, the beginner um, phenomena or something that beginners in a traditional system would definitely know and be, would be able to, to say uh, without any doubt. But you as a, as a polyglot with this approach, you may not know everything about that, but you know so much more about all the other phenomena in, in grammar. I hope this explanation is clear, but to make it even clearer, let me um, briefly compare these two approaches, right? The, the school system and uh, what polyglots do. So I believe in school, uh, in all those traditional systems that I have taught in and, and learned uh, in, for many years, grammar was always the main focus of lessons. Um, the teacher focused on covering a certain grammar phenomena and everything else like reading, writing, uh, it was kind of combined to make sure that that grammar is practiced and, and is used uh, in a lot of detail because we were coloring that little paper, uh, sorry, that little square of the present simple tense, for example. What, how polyglots do it is that grammar is more seen as a shortcut to understanding the language. 
So as I, as I mentioned, you as an adult can learn about a few rules and this can help you in the future to apply those rules. And you don't need to um, see all the instances. For example, uh, as you see in the paper, we see instances of, of different things, right? But you, you don't need to see all the past tenses of every single verb in order to be able to, to use the past tense, right? Because you already know the rule. You know there are some exceptions. You need to make sure you, you know about those exceptions. But everything else is, is um, you know, you just apply the rule and use it with new verbs even. Grammatical phenomena at school are taught in isolation. So this is the one square and then we move to the next one and then we move to the next one. Polyglots mix up the phenomena and mixing up stuff is actually incredibly useful for your brain. You remember stuff long term when you learn a little bit of this and that and this and that and you come back to this, you know, with, with uh, the original topic and then a little bit of that and mixing up is really, really useful. So I believe that that's why polyglots learn grammar much, much faster and, and uh, in a much more effective way. At school, usually there is no revision or very little revision of the previously learned grammar because the teacher needs to cover, you know, different topics. They, they cannot really go through everything that, we, that, that they have covered in the past uh, year or half year. Uh, there may be a quick revision, but usually I, think, I believe that this revision is just not enough. It's not sufficient. Polyglots, on the other hand, make a lot of revision. And then I also noticed at school uh, that grammar was taught uh, through very dull and repetitive exercises. I remember when I was learning English, we had an exercise where we were supposed to change can into be able to. In every single sentence, it was the same thing. She could do it. She was able to do it. I can do it. I am able to do it. And I just kept writing and writing. And I, I asked myself at that time, it's like, what is this good for? It's a mechanical exercise where I don't need to think about anything, it's it's a repetitive, I, I don't need to really think about which one would be better, can or be able to. And that's why I don't actually do such exercises anymore. Um, I, I believe that polyglots are very good at picking more effective exercises, the ones where you actually need to decide, okay, do I use the past tense or the, the let's say, the, the, past, the simple past tense or the continuous past tense, right? And that's, why, that's because I want to test myself, I want to ask my brain which is a, the better alternative in this context, and that's, that's how my brain learns. So I believe that uh, in general pol the polyglot approach uh, is much more effective because it works with how the brain learns. And at school uh, this um, system of learning one single thing in detail and then moving on to the next one, I believe it's not very useful. My reasons for believing this is that the more I learn about how we learn, the, the less this traditional system makes sense for me. But also when you, when you look at um, so many people in the world who have been learning a language for many years and they still cannot use it in practice, I believe there must be something wrong with the system, with the, with the methods that they use. And um, in my experience, it's because, you know, Grammar is one of, the, one of the reasons because it's so heavily focused on grammar, but not in the most efficient way. So you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, test it for yourself. Try to work with grammar in the way we describe here and then compare it with the, with the way you worked with grammar previously. Maybe you find out that you actually prefer the traditional way and it suits you for whatever reason. If it works for you, that's okay. If it doesn't, you should change something and this may be a good alternative.